Hi there everyone and hey, welcome to March's Tarot Psychic Tarot Reading for Cancer. Cancer, you may have been waiting for your upload to turn up on the um, internet, on the channel. I've had an unending problem with the New Zealand internet system. It truly is unbelievably slow. But that aside, I had done your reading for you yesterday and it was all formatted into the video and it has disappeared off the system. So we're doing yours again. So for whatever reason, we are going to pick new cards and everything because I can't quite remember exactly the format or the structure of the cards that came out because this is a relatively complicated reading. We are using 10 cards, the first of which is in front of you there, which is a numerological based card which works also with the essence of colour and the vibration of the word on the card. We then work through four Morgan Greer cards and underneath them we utilise Soul Urge cards which have mandalas on them which will interact at a deeper level for you to understand the Morgan Greer tarot cards. And at the end of the reading we will be doing a final message card as well. So let's start with what you see before you. Number 77, the card of spirituality. It is a beautiful, strong, violet colour, actually. It's stronger than the colour, for instance, of the amethyst. So it's more like the crown chakra energy. This is the energy at the top of the centre of your head that you're connected to all of the universe and source energies with. This is where you gain your intuitive abilities and your understanding of the cosmos and the connection to your soul here in this physical plane on earth. Number 77 adds up to 14 which of course then adds to a 5. Number 5 is a positive vibrational number, it's in the middle of the sequences but it's often referred to as a buoyant number that instigates activity, it's the seeker of freedom and change as well. So somehow within your spiritual realm or your own personal psyche, you might be uh, looking around change or making more interactive decisions with that. And as well, the number 77 will also be relevant. Any double numbers for you in the month of March could be quite useful in whatever way you choose to use them. So let's move that card up to the top left and we will then start with the rest of your reading. So Cancer, let's see what's in store for you guys for March 2017. We'll just get a little bit of your energy into these cards. Ooh. Well, that seems to be all that we wanted to shuffle. The first card is the Four of Rods. The second card is the Sun. I see plenty of beautiful yellow coming here. The third card is the Five of Pentacles. And the fourth card is the Star. Wow, you know, two major arcanas, but the ones that you've got are the best in the deck. These are the most revered. These are the ones that people want to see come out in their readings. One pentacles and one rods or wands. And also that is a good card as well. So March seems to be um, boding some very positive light filled energies for you. And again if we go back to that spirituality card, that's where the light comes into us. That's where we receive the energy of light through the crown chakra. So I'm just shuffling these up a little bit more again. Just bear with me. And we will see what cards are going to match for your Morgan Greer deck. Forgiveness. Now I may have these upside down. It doesn't matter. They're oracle cards as such. Humour. Self-esteem and doubt. So when we look at the mandala cards that have arrived for you, we've moved ourselves down a little bit to the heart chakra area. 
and might just move that back a little bit so you can also get the energy of the spirituality card. We see a lot of greens coming through the Mandela cards and we know that's the area of the heart chakra and the energy of love as well. Now the soul urge cards at the bottom or what I'm calling the Mandela cards, you can clearly see that each of them have an individual Mandela on them. Mandelas are a high frequency vibrational design that will enact within your innate being at the soul level, at subconscious levels and at DNA levels. So what I suggest to you all is that you pick one Mandela that you are particularly attracted to and that's the area that you need to focus on. It's better to look at the Mandela and forget the words underneath it because once we actually incorporate it into the reading, the words are not necessarily exactly where the energy or the message of the card goes. So find the Mandela that you're most attracted to and that's the area that you need to work on for the month. By focusing on the Mandela and by utilising the energies, it will help clear blockages and create flow. Let's go and start with the reading. Now basically the four cards are roughly for each week of the month, but time is very fluid at the moment and so I'm finding with readings as well there is more leniency with a time gate perspective. So what appears to be the first week may well um, roll itself into other perspectives or times within the month. So the first card is the Four of Wands. It is a beautiful card. It talks about happiness and satisfaction and dreams and desires and fruition. Often this card will turn up when there is something like an engagement around or the, um, a wedding or the offer of a happy home coming into your sight. Now sometimes this card is also around when people move homes. So this can be a card that signifies a change of address for some of you. Each of us move homes or locations for different reasons. Sometimes it's for a very happy, powerful, positive reason. Other times it's to escape something that is um, draining our energy. Now, for each of you, there will be a different perspective here. Um, the card often does signify happy movement around the home or into a happy home environment. But when we look at the card underneath, which is very much the orange and the sacral chakra energy of your body, which is um, the lower part of, of the, below the navel and just around the hips area, this is the part of the body where we... Um, connect with our creativeness. This is the source of fire and passion within us. Not just physical or sexual, but total creative source, energy and inspiration. So when that part of us is closed down, we begin to decay. And we can decay physically or emotionally or spiritually. Now the word... <coughs> The word forgiveness on the card is a beautiful word. It's something that we seldom manage to do in its entirety as human beings. We're not a particularly forgiving species. We have trouble with it for whatever reason. So one of the greatest lessons we are here to learn is the art of forgiveness. And I think if um, we go back to thinking of some of the great spiritual leaders of life and I know the, the story of um, Jesus perhaps more than any others but he said turn the other cheek and I think that's the total connection to the energy of forgiveness. The words below that are I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. So given that this is associated with a house or happy homes, some of you may have been in a situation where your home environment or the people within your family environment are not in a harmonious place. There may have been anger or um, dissolution of some sort or regret or harbouring of resentment. Now all of these negative energies draw us down and as I said earlier, they stop the flow of source and creativeness. 
And when that happens, we tend to spiral a whole lot of other areas of our life just down into the sludge and the grime of negativity. So something for a lot of you around your families or your homes is requiring you to allow the act of forgiveness to come in. Now forgiveness, here's where you have to balance your understanding of it. Forgiveness doesn't mean um, allowing the other person to justify any wrongdoings they've done to you. It doesn't mean that if they have treated you in a disrespectful or dangerous or damaging way that it's right. It just means that you forgive them at the time for the action that they have incurred. You don't have to forget it and you don't have to um, allow them to continue to do, to do it. Hence this is why some people may be moving away from a situation where there has been unhappiness or degradation of relationships. By moving out of a place you might be in, you could be moving to a higher frequency and a happier home. So there's all those possibilities when those two cards are paired up together. So, you know, it's really hard to leave your residence or your home where you've been living or the people you've been living with. But if it is damaging at any level and it's not positive for you at the physical, mental or spiritual level, some sort of change needs to take place. And as I say, by moving out, you can possibly raise your vib your vibrations and you can shift yourself into a more harmonious home. The other aspect, as I said, of the card, the number four of wands, is um, marriages, engagements and happy relationships. And again, there could be some degree of forgiveness tied into this somewhere along the line. Perhaps there were misunderstandings earlier in the relationship or misunderstandings between other people about your relationship. But either way, forgiveness will carry you forward into the harmony of positiveness within your friends or your family connection. And remember, not everyone thinks of family as their direct siblings or parents or cousins or aunties. Family for a lot of people are their friends. And so whatever your concept of family is, is what we are talking about for you. Let's move to the next card and we see the sun. Now, I have to say, Cancer, there's a degree of fertility in your reading. Um, the sun has fertility in it and conception and pregnancies. The star can have it. And even the four of wands can suggest that type of energy and feeling as well. So there may be the possibility of some of you thinking of a pregnancy or falling pregnant at this time in March. If that's not what you want, you should be very careful and take um, remedial action to make sure that doesn't happen. But coming back to the sun, it is a gorgeous card and the sun is the provider of all life to us on earth. Without its energy, we couldn't exist. So wherever you look and whatever you think and feel, the sun is behind it, one way or another. It is the benefactor of all energies. Sometimes it would be a little bit too much for us, especially when we get sunburnt. And other times when it's not around, we get the SAD, which is Seasonal Affective Disorder. We crave the energy of the sun. The sun is nurture new life, new beginnings, warmth, comfort, love, happiness, joy. Any of those radiant energies is what the sun is. Now those two in the card, a male and female, are looking at each other. They're in the younger spectrum, you know, late teens to sort of 30s. This can be the instigation of relationships as well when the sun is here. So there is this feeling of uh, carefreeness and joyfulness and togetherness. Now, I like the card that came underneath it because it says humour. I choose to focus on the lighter side of life. And the sun is the light of life. So it's asking you to focus on the gifts that the sun gives us and balance yourself with the sun as well. Um, to think more about 
the energies that it provides and how it helps us to move forward positively. The Sun card also talks about um, being in the moment. And when we're in the moment, we are in that wonderful place of no fears or worries or inhibitions. And it's often considered to be the childlike essence of life. So it, the card humour and the sun are both reminding you to be more playful and more childlike. And that's why the humour card actually matches really well with the sun. So I think the main energy for that there is that you are being gifted with this wonderful positive energy of the sun and that March could treat you with a degree of happiness and um, that reminding yourself to be more like a child and engage in life in a happy way and a happy disposition. So we come to the third week and we see roughly the third week and we see the Five of Pentacles. It's your only Pentacles card. So it makes me think that for most of the month you're not necessarily focused on money but there is this bit of an issue there. The Five of Pentacles is one of the more negative when we talk about finances or, or monetary situations. Now Pentacles can often be associated with jobs because for most of us, that's how we earn an income or how we obtain our money. Those two there are hugging each other in a rather dissolute manner. They seem to be booted out of perhaps something like a church or a community and they're on their own. The energy of the card often suggests that, that you feel out on your own or not able to be part of a group or in a bit of financial lack and a bit worried about it. And I think that's why the humour card comes back in. Um, you need to lighten up the month and really bring that sun energy in and also the star energy. So the five of pentacles is often transient and it can be a short term issue. But what it suggests to you is if during the month you have any financial woes or tightening of the purse strings, you need to maintain a budget. And you need to be careful of how you spend your money. So don't go out there lavishly, you know, celebrating or rip-roaring, buying all these wonderful flash clothes or cars or trips. Be a little bit conservative for March and make some more um, in-depth plans about how you can deal with any possible shortcomings. The other thing that that Five of Pentacles often reminds me of is people who... Um, are physically not as well either so often this could be a signal of getting a flu or a cold and especially a sore throat and again one of the greatest things to heal that is the sun. Um, sometimes it can also be a broken bone and uh, sometimes in the leg or, or like leg pain so a sprain, a twist, a bruise, something along those lines. Now if we address the card at the bottom this very pretty elegant mandala it's called self-esteem and it says I possess gifts of the soul that benefit me and others so sometimes when we come across patches in our life where we seem to have lack it is often because we have lacked our self-esteem lack generally stems from our own energies it's what we are portraying back out to the universe that gives us either lack or manifestation. So by increasing your self-esteem and putting in some humour, adding the forgiveness and getting rid of doubt, you're making yourself really, really strong for the month. So you see how I said earlier about not necessarily looking at the word on the bottom of the card, but understanding more the energy that's coming from the mandala and how it can change energies around. So there's a lot in those four mandalas about lifting your energy up to a higher level and raising your frequency to make sure that you really enjoy things like the sun, the four of wands and the star, which are there for you. But if you, if you don't interact enough and if you don't raise your own frequency, you, they'll bypass you. So... Each time, you know, like these readings are very good that we're doing here because you see the cards at the top and you think, oh, okay, you know, fine, I'll keep my eye out for that. 
But if you don't know how to actually activate it or how to deal with it at the soul level, they'll, they'll pass you by. And that's why I think these are really in, integrative and powerful readings because you're getting this extra internal information. Self-esteem and pride are two very important things to have as humans. Um, it's not about being full of yourself and going out there and, you know, lording it all around and saying, oh, look at me, you know, I'm bloody fantastic, I'm amazing. It's not that. Self-esteem is knowing that you are a totally worthy, loved, beautiful human being who is here on this planet to live your life. And your life is yours. Your integrity values are yours. Your self-esteem and self-worth are yours. And they are the most important things that you can ever have with you. So know that any time you come up against a little glitch or some odd phase in life, lift up that self-esteem and it helps to move out the negativity because it comes, it originates from you. So as you change the vibration, the negativity lowers in, in its magnification. So we move to the fourth card and we see the star. And I really enjoy this card as well. Again, it's one of the most positive in the deck. So the star amplifies or amplifies a lot of different things. She is on the ground with two jugs of water and she's pouring them out. So there's a degree of balance about the star. And notice she also has no clothes on. So we talk about balance at many levels in our life and it's about the balance of your emotions and your hormones and your physical body and your diet. So make sure that you are um, in balance for the month and that you are physically well balanced as well. There is a degree of sexuality with the card. Again, conception, fertility, pregnancies, also new relationships and very physically active uh, chemically active, you know, boom, instant attraction relationships. These could be coming as well. Now, if you look at the stars above her head, there is a big one and then there's a whole bunch of little ones. They're often um, suggesting that there are guardian angels around you as well as your spirit guides and higher light beings that are bringing in situations, people and um, pathways and doorways at this particular point in time that they wish you to be experiencing. So the star, whenever it's in a reading, gives a certain protection against any of the other cards and any negativity within a reading because it's universal white light guardian protection. So also know that if there's anything in the month that you're unsure about or you want cleared, you can ask for the support and help of the people or the spirits or the light around you. And until you ask, they can't actually interact. They can't uplift and do anything. So you must constantly be in the mode of asking. I also think too, I've talked a little bit about diet there. Um, I think we've probably covered off a lot of the energies of the star. So we'll move to the doubt card at the bottom. It says, I release the need to know all the answers. So again, the, the message there is a little bit more subliminal. It's not quite so obvious. But I think from my perspective and feelings I'm getting, that the, the little stars above the woman are the guardian angels and your guides. And they are the ones bringing about certain situations. And they're asking you not to doubt them because they literally say, all is under control. It will be dealt with and this is part of what you're meant to experience. Now this is whether it's good or bad. So learn to have faith in your life's journey and the path you're on. Learn to have faith that you're not alone. Um, learn to have faith that things turn out for the best eventually, especially when we apply positivity and powerful affirmations and our desires and our manifestations. So learn that by having faith, there is never any doubt. 
So there we are guys, that's covering off nicely the main part of the reading. And um, we'll put these cards away now. I hope you've all picked out which particular Mandela you're interested in the most. Um, yeah, I, I think for me I'm really attracted to this forgiveness one. And uh, I love the colours in it, the orange and the purple, because they're such a juxtaposition of colours. But, and you know, as I said earlier, it's one of the hardest things that we seem to be able to have problem with is forgiveness and I know myself I have a problem with it sometimes so I'm sure I have a lesson to learn there. So in putting the cards away we will see what your final card is for the reading and in fact since, you, since I've kind of made a bit of a muck up I'm going to pull two for you guys because I just am and we can change the rules. <laughs> so I'm going to pull two of these. These are very active. They're actually hyperactive little cards. They cause quite a lot of activity within the reading one way or another. And um, usually I can't see it until I am formatting the video phase of the reading. But there have been quite a lot of little subtleties in the background. So this is for Cancer and we're going to look at two cards for the end of the reading. Okay. Holiday. Everyone wants a holiday. And dietary change. So I talked a little bit to you before about dietary change and it would seem that that is a relevant um, piece of information for some of you to take on board. So let's just have a look and see what the holiday card says. The answer you're looking for can be found during a vacation, retreat or holiday getaway. And I think often when we are on holiday, we are more relaxed, we're more in tune to uh, the environment around us, to Mother Nature, to Earth, um, to our happy feelings. At holidays, unless it's for a, a sad reason, but generally a happy holiday is all about love and joy and bliss and splashing around in water or climbing mountains or, or looking in museums or, you know, things that you enjoy, that you're passionate about, that you've saved up for and that you are really connected to. So when it says the answer you're looking for can be found, I find that there might be a degree of connection to your spiritual being with this. If we took more notice of how we feel when we're on a holiday, if we're relaxing and enjoying ourselves or socialising or doing physical activities, those parts of us are usually the true us. They're usually the who we are because we're really in the place of connection. So for whatever that means for you individually, a holiday will, will be beneficial or maybe it's your next holiday coming and maybe putting some planning and effort into it and spending a bit more time thinking about how it could be really positive for you or provide some sort of answers and your questions will be different everybody's questions will be different but some of you may be questioning am I in the right line of work am I in the right relationships am I living in the right part of the world is my health healthy you know this is often what holidays prompt us into thinking in the back of our minds so you might find an answer when you connect at the deepest level we go to that next card and we see the dietary change. Improve your diet and your life will also improve. I have to say it is literally as simple as that. We all know that if we had a healthy, natural diet that humans are meant to be eating, I doubt there would be too much wrong with many of us. Yes, there will still be other things that might not be totally fixed by a diet. But I work in the medical realm, and I have done for very many years, and I know myself categorically that the diet is very, very much a part of our success, our physical success, also our mental, hormonal. Um, it, it really is the foundation of our physical, emotional and mental health. 
I don't know how many of you have ever done this, but I recently went and had a hair testing um, health test done. So they take some of your hair off the top of your head and they analyse it through a machine. Now the analysis information is sent off to Sweden where they must have um, an, a technological system that analyses it. And then it comes back pretty instantly actually within an hour. And it tells you everything about your body that's either lacking or out of balance. And I found that so helpful. I actually knew before I went in some of the things that I needed to be addressing. And I already knew intuitively which ones would pop up and what the issues would be. And one of them was definitely my gut health needed to be um, looked after more with probiotics and things like the kombucha, the fermented foods. Um, everyone's gut health needs to be looked after actually and we're often not doing that. That is the basis of all good health in our bodies and it's not talked about enough. I also needed to um, take some more of the, the oils, you know, the flaxseed or fish oils or whatever you want. If you're vegetarian, you obviously, um, some, some people don't like hearing about the omega oils. But there were several other things as well that I just categorically knew I already had to address. So if you think about it intuitively and connect with your body and listen to the messages, you probably don't even need to have something like the hair test done. But for those of you that might be wondering or might find it interesting, it was really, really good. And they also, the professionals who are doing this, they are able to give you ideas for ways to increase the type of foods that you need to eat and how to make the changes in your diet. So there we are, Cancer. I trust you have really enjoyed this March reading. I've enjoyed doing it for you. It's been a, a really nice one. There were a lot of intrinsic messages that started to come through the reading. So I think March for you does have some great opportunities and you do have to be connected to be able to uplift them. So anyhow guys, I thank you all for subbing, liking and especially commenting. I love reading all the comments and when I can, I reply to them. So have a wonderful, safe, happy, healthy, sunny March. So take care everyone. Thanks very much. Much love. Namaste.